How creative do you think you are? In Drive, the surprising truth that motivates us, Daniel Pink gives us a creativity test. So I'm gonna give that test to you. It's called the candle problem. It comes from the 1930s and a psychologist by the name of Carl Dunker. So here it is, here's a picture. And the goal is to get, um, to, to tack on that candle to the wooden wall and see, you know, and light it without the wax dripping onto the table. So that's the, the, the main goal. So think about how would you do that? How would you solve that problem? Maybe you wanna take this test with your friends or someone you care about or one of your team members. So pause the video now, don't watch, because I'll give the answer later. My name is Kirk Double K Barbera, and this is your business book tip of the day. So before I give you the answer, what Daniel Pink is trying to show you is the idea of rewards-based motivation versus intrinsic motivation. One of the things that occurs with rewards-based motivation is a surprising truth about how we as human beings are actually motivated. So for the longest time, we have tried to motivate people in the same way that we motivate rats. There's a little piece of cheese at the end of the tunnel and I'll make your way through it. That's why it's called the rat race, right? So there, that was very effective for quite a while, but now we live in this information age. Now we live in an age where you have to be more creative in order to succeed. And so he, in this book, and you should watch his TED Talk, it's an amazing TED Talk. The book is even better. Don't rely just on TED Talks. Uh, don't be a TED Talk thinker. And you know, so he talks a lot about what really motivates people. What was surprising about that motivational truth? So again, I want you to pause. I'm, not gonna, I'm gonna give you the answer for the candle problem in a minute, but pause the video in a second. What do you think happened when the psychologist Carl Dunker paid people, gave them incentives to solve the problem, to solve the candle problem. How long do you think it took them? Okay, pause, take a second and think about it. Okay, now, welcome back. I'm gonna read this to you. I hope you actually paused it. I'm gonna read this to you. Uh, this is from the book. How much faster did the incentivized group come up with a solution? On average, it took them nearly three and a half minutes longer Yes, three and a half minutes longer. Whenever I relayed these results to a group of business people, the reaction is almost a loud, pained, involuntary gasp. The point is that when people were not incentivized by an external reward, they actually solved the problem faster, three, three and a half minutes faster than the group that didn't have the solution or didn't have the external reward. That's because they, we as humans are internally motivated to be creative. Everybody's creative. That's the principle that he finds out in Drive in The Surprising Truth is that we want to be creative. Now, the challenge as a business person is, well, how do you reward people for creativity? How do you not destroy creativity? Because if you give them rewards for the creativity, you could actually destroy their ability to be creative. You can drum it out of them, out of your workers, out of your you know, friends, out of your children. So you really need to read this book to learn more about this, but the principle to understand is that creativity is different than say a routine task like logging uh, data in an Excel sheet. That type of task, routine tasks like that, that actually does do better when you pay someone extra rewards. I'll give you an extra 40 bucks to finish this menial task. But when it comes to creative problems like this candle one that I'm gonna give you the answer to and hopefully you didn't Google it, that that is actually something that is not good for external motivation to give them external rewards it destroys their ability so when you're trying to you know if you're in like real estate dealing or negotiation and it's really important to be creative make sure you help your people stay creative by letting them desire that creativity for itself that should be the motivation that is the motivation and that's his principle that you need to learn and master as a, if you're a business owner or you have a team. Master that motivational principle to help you as a parent. So here's the answer to the candle problem. Hopefully again you didn't Google it. So we'll put a picture here. This is what it needs to look like. So the idea of the candle solution um, is to overcome what's called functional fixedness. You look at the box and you see one function as a container for the tax. Right? So you look at that box and you just functionally think that is for 
um, the tax. That's it. And it's hard for you to creatively get outside the box and think of other ways to use that. Um, so by, by thinking afresh, you eventually see that the box can have another function as a platform for the candle. So the point of this is that's, you know, this is such a good example because that is kind of the essence of creativity is you're using th things that exist. So it's not like you're um, creating something what's called ex nihilo, which means out of nothing. That's not creativity. Creativity is seeing a bunch of things in the world, like tax, a box, and a candle, and using, you know, coming up with a unique way to make that work for what you want to accomplish. And in business, that's critical today to make the sale, to make your customers happy, to provide a better, you know, a better, better client experience. People need to get creative. So don't destroy their creativity. Read this book. My name is Kirk Double K Barbera, and this is your business book tip of the day. Remember, reading is not a passive sport. It's active. So go out there, make some contact with some books.